Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about eating disorders. So I'm continuing my chunk of mental illness slash disorders. I want to get a good chunk of them in. And as usual, I'll put the link to the article into the description. Again, this is from the National Institute of Mental Health, and they don't give credit for someone who wrote the article because it's more of an educational thing. So I won't be given credit. I do look, as I'll look again, just to make sure. Alrighty. And now eating disorders are another thing because when you think of mental illness and the stigma attached to that, and I compare it to this, you know, going to the gym with your friends is cool, but going to the therapist, that type of thing is looked frowned upon. Well, I think eating disorders are the um, more, you know, whatever, the bigger issue in the sense of being not considered serious. And the overview here actually describes it pretty well. So I'll begin reading. And just want to make sure there is no credit. I hate doing this and then skipping people's names, you know, go through the trouble writing an article. Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to talk about eating disorders. I'm reading the article. The link will be in the, the description. If you have to remind me, it happens from time to time. Let me know. All right, eating disorders. Overview. There is a commonly held misconception that eating disorders are a lifestyle choice. Eating disorders are actually serious and often fatal illnesses that are associated with severe disturbances in people's eating behaviors and related thoughts and emotions. Preoccupation with food, body weight, and shape may also signal an eating disorder. Common eating disorders include anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. Signs and symptoms. Anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa nervosa is a condition where people avoid food, severely restrict food, we eat very small quantities of only certain foods. They also may weigh themselves repeatedly. Even when dangerously underweight, they may see themselves as overweight. There are two subtypes of anorexia nervosa, a restrictive subtype and a binge purge subtype. In the restrictive subtype of anorexia nervosa, people severely limit the amount of food or the type of food they consume. In the binge purge subtype of anorexia nervosa, people also greatly restrict the amount of type of food they consume. In addition, they may have binge eating and purging episodes, eating large amounts of food in a short time, followed by vomiting or using laxatives or diuretics to get rid of what was consumed. Oh, by the way, I'm notorious for fucking up the human English language. Well, human, human language too. Any human language probably. But, yeah. We'll continue. Anorexia nervosa can be fatal. It has an extremely high death mortality rate compared with other mental disorders. People with anorexia are at risk of dying from medical complications associated with starvation. Suicide is the second leading cause for death of, of death for people diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. And there's a little burb here. If you know, so know someone struggling or having thoughts of suicide, call or text the 988 suicide and crisis lifeline at 988 or chat at 988lifeline.org and in life-threatening conditions, situations, call 911. Anorexia nervosa, you got uh, symptoms include extremely restricted eating, extreme thinness, a relentless pursuit of thinness and unwillingness to maintain a normal or healthy weight, intense fear of gaining weight, Distorted body image, a self-esteem that is heavily influenced by perceptions of body weight and shape, or a denial of the seriousness of low body weight. Other symptoms may develop over time, including 
thinness, thinning of the bones, osteopenia or osteoporosis, osteoporosis, <laughs> mild anemia and muscle wasting and weakness, brittle hair and nails, dry and yellowish skin, growth of fine hair all over the body, lanugo in parentheses, severe constipation, low blood pressure, slowed breathing and pulse, damage to the structure and function of the heart, brain damage, multi-organ failure, drop in internal body temperature, causing a person to feel cold all the time, lethargy, sluggishness, or feeling tired all the time, infertility, that's a lot of symptoms that develop over time. I only knew like one one person growing up, but still, it's just, I don't know, my heart goes out again. Bulimia nervosa. Bulimia nervosa is a condition where people have recurrent and frequent episodes of eating unusually large amounts of food and feeling a lack of control over these episodes. This binge eating is followed by behavior that compensates for the overeating, such as forced vomiting, excessive use of laxatives or diuretics, fasting, excessive exercise, or a combination of these behaviors. People with bulimia nervosa may be slightly underweight, normal weight, or over overweight. That's a weird way to say it. Right? I guess that's proper English. Slightly underweight, normal weight, or over overweight. Symptoms include chronically inflamed and sore throat, Swollen sal salivary glands in the neck and jaw area. Worn tooth enamel and incredibly sensitive and decaying teeth as a result of exposure to stomach acid. Acid reflux disorder and other gastrointestinal problems. Intestinal distress and irritation from laxative abuse. Severe dehydration from purging of fluids. Electrolyte imbalance. Too low or too high levels of sodium, calcium, potassium and other minerals which can lead to stroke or a heart attack. Wow. Binge eating disorder. Binge eating disorder is a condition where people lose control over their eating and have reoccurring episodes of eating unusually large amounts of food. Unlike bulimia nervosa, periods of binge eating are not followed by purging, excessive exercise, or fasting. As a result, people with binge eating disorder are often overweight or obese. Binge eating disorder is the most common eating disorder in the U.S. <laughs> well, that's, that's all right. It's not funny funny, but it's funny. If you know what I mean? You know, the meme of America eating everybody overweight. Symptoms include eating unusually large amounts of food in specific amounts of time, such as a two-hour period. Eating even when you're full or not hungry. Eating fast during binge episodes. Eating until you're uncomfortably full. Eating alone or in secret to avoid embarrassment. Feeling distressed, ashamed, or guilty about your eating. Frequently eating, uh, frequently dieting, possibly without weight loss. Oh, this must be, for some people, just got to be... Terrifying. I mean, I guess I'm close to one of these things, you know. You know, I don't. It's not a disorder. I don't want to insult people, but avoiding restrictive food intake disorder. Oh boy, <laughs> avoiding restrictive food intake disorder, ARFID, previously known as selective eating disorder, is a condition where people limit the amount of type of food eaten. Unlike anorexia nervosa, people with ARFID do not have a distorted body image or extreme fear of gaining weight. ARFID is most common in the middle childhood and usually has an earlier onset than other eating disorders. Many children go through phases of picky eating, but a child with ARFID does not eat enough calories to grow and develop properly. And an adult with ARFID does not eat enough calories to maintain basic body function. Symptoms include dramatic restriction of types of types or amount of food eaten, 
lack of appetite or interest in food, dramatic weight loss, upset stomach, abdominal pain, or other gastrointestinal issues with no other known cause. Limited range of preferred foods that become even more limited. Picky eating that gets progressively worse. Uh, <laughs> I'm a notoriously picky eater. Uh-oh. Risk factors. Eating disorders can affect people of all ages, racial, ethnic backgrounds, body weights, and genders. Eating disorders frequently appear during the teen years or adult, young adulthood, but may also develop during childhood or later in life. Researchers are finding that eating disorders are caused by a complex interaction of genetic, biological, behavioral, psychological, and social factors. Researchers are using the latest technology and science to better understand eating disorders. One approach involves the study of human genes. Eating disorders run in families. Researchers are working to identify DNA variations that are linked to the increased risk of developing eating disorders. Brain imaging studies are also providing a better understanding of eating disorders. For example, researchers have found differences in pattern of brain activity in women with eating disorders in comparison with healthy women. This kind of research can help guide the development of new means of diagnosis and treatment of eating disorders. Now that's going to be, one day this is going to be the tipping scale. There's going to be a threshold we hit where I believe that a lot of underlying issues of humanity and the brain are going to be fixed in the sense of we can know what to do, we know what, you know, what synapses need to be corrected and whatever. I just, it feels like it's, I mean, I just do a lot of deep dives on a lot of science and technology. I do to my breakthrough of 2020, I'll do the breakthroughs of the year, medical breakthroughs. It just feels like that, but I always say, going to be 15 to 20 years from now risk factors eating disorders can affect people of all ages but uh, did i do this uh -oh. yeah treatments and therapies it is important to seek treatment early for eating disorders people with eating disorders are at higher risk for suicide and medical complications People with eating disorders can often have other mental disorders, such as depression or anxiety, <clears throat> I'm sorry, or problems with substance use. What? Come on. What? We get we get everything? Complete recovery is possible. Treatment plans are tailored to individual needs and may include one or more of the following. Individual, group, and or family psychotherapy. Medical care and monitoring, nutritional counseling, medications. <laughs> Psychotherapies. Family based therapy, a type of psychotherapy where parents of adolescents with anorexia and nervosa assume responsibility for feeding their child. It appears to be very effective in helping people gain weight and improve eating habits and moods. To reduce or eliminate binge eating and purging behaviors, People may undergo cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, which is another form, another type of psychotherapy that helps a person learn how to identify distorted or unhelpful thinking patterns and recognize and change inaccurate beliefs. That's my go-to there. Cognitive behavior therapy is one of the um, things I find most interesting and one of the techniques I try to use in my meditation and if I'm going to try to help somebody in some way. Medications. Evidence also suggests that medications such as antidepressants, antipsychotics, or mood stabilizers may also be helpful for treating eating disorders and other co-occurring illnesses such as anxiety or depression. And by the way, thank you Demi for the second I said mood stabilizers, I heard that fucking song. I'm gonna go move. Whatever the fuck that Doja Cat maybe song. Bitch, I'm a cow. All right, thank you. All right, that's it for that. All right. The Food and Drug Administration has the latest information on medication approvals, warnings, and patient information guides. Join a study. Oh, this is the one every everyone that gets me. 
Clinical trials are research studies that look at new ways to prevent, detect, or treat diseases and conditions. The goal of clinical trials is to determine if a new test or treatment works and is safe. Although individuals may benefit from being part of a clinical trial, participants should be aware that the primary purpose of a clinical trial is to gain new scientific knowledge so that others may be better helped in the future. Researchers at NIMH and around the country conduct many studies with patients and healthy volunteers. We have new and better treatment options today because of what clinical trials uncovered years ago. Be a part of tomorrow's medical breakthroughs. Talk to your healthcare provider about clinical trials, their benefits and risks, and whether one is right for you. To learn more or find a study, visit, and there's a link. Oh, by the way, I should have said, I always say this, throughout the article you'll see highlighted words on the line maybe different color and those are links that bring you to another portion of what it's highlighted so this has nimh's clinical trials web page let me go there obviously you can get into a deep dive so as you're reading an article like this or you know looking through it and something catches your attention maybe uh you know, tangentially attached to like an issue we're reading about or you know if it's not an eating disorder or schizophrenia and if you hit the link you can go on to another aspect of that area and it's fascinating for me because i like to keep doing deep dives and get as much knowledge as i can i always try to say like even an informed opinion is better than just fucking going with instinct and guessing although they do say you get a 15 percent chance of being intuition being right and you can ride that but that's another study type thing we got the learn more section with free brochures and shareable resources and that goes into eating disorders more about food and you'll see everything and by the way the clinical trials page you got lots of videos that they link to it it's another way of looking at this as you know i'm, I'm reading the national institute of mental health and i'm butchering the fucking human language that's fine and as you look around and you do things they actually have links and stuff and you'll see videos these are excellent little um, shorts and stuff. And for instance, I have a friend who, uh, when he had his first child, he has two now, I believe. Maybe on the way to a third, who knows? I think people do know. But anyway, um, I sent him this whole um, psychology. There's like 23 videos, and each one's about 7 to 11 minutes. And it's a crash course. I think that's actually what, actually what it's called. And I watch it like two or three times a year just to keep my... You know, you know, a little bit of a base knowledge in certain things. But that's another thing. Some of these links, you get videos. A lot of people don't want to listen to me fuck up the language. You got professionals who read it. Sometimes there is a link for that. And you can go and do little YouTube checks and, and searches. Believe it or not, this is a great time in the world for things like that. Yeah, I'll be able to go find some Karen and Ken fucking drama shit. It usually fucks everything up. But I think in the long run, information age, this is a wonderful time. So like, again, you got links to everything that was the, you know, clinical trials, even the multimedia. And you got video on that. There's a... Uh, there's a multimedia uh, talking about eating disorders. And again, another way to do this is to make it, you know, not such a stigma. People could talk about it without being, you know, stigmatized. And this goes back to just the way we are. You know, we're in America, the, you know, fat, overweight eating places. And McDonald's is here. There's a Burger King here. There's pizzerias everywhere. I walk out of my house to get everything at my disposal. Chinese food, Korean food. Vietnamese food now granted if you're smart or you have a, a, a sense for this you find there's tons of fruit stores and so you're always able to pick up you know a fresh pear and grape I'm into grapes right now bananas and there are ways to get around this but eating disorders can be so terrifying to me and my own brush with might be because you always go to what might be uh, you know, do I have this issue and say damn hell no I got depression or you know you know, anxiety, stress, PTSD, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And you're having issues with your weight and stuff. And it's always going to be drawn to your attention. And you look good. I mean, it's just who we are as a people. But looking through this, going through this, like, 
what's people's how people's lives are affected. And you would think, oh, you know, oh, I got this thing called schizophrenia, or I got bipolar disorder. You know, what happens when some of those things overlap and you've got eating disorder? You want to add that to looking in the mirror, am I overweight? And what if you're doing things? What if you're a model? What if you're an actress? Or, you know, you're doing, you know, streaming and shows. This is a, this is a, these are issues. We don't just hand wave them away. Another reason why I wanted to do these, like, 9 to 11 mental disorders, I think it was up to 15, some of the fucking bookmarks I got, was that sometimes it's looked, it's frowned upon that some of these disorders aren't serious. And again, the opening, um, the overview for this, I'll read it again. There is a commonly held misconception that eating disorders are a lifestyle choice. And granted, yes. But sometimes, and maybe for the most part, I'm not a fucking researcher, but maybe that is true. And they're fatal. They could be serious and fatal. And we'll sit here if we make fun of people. You know, look, I'm not here to you know, be woke and cancel Dave Chappelle or actors and actresses in certain types of movies. But can we have an understanding of things? That people die from this? It affects their lives? I've gone through so many of these mental health uh, disorder things that it's scary how many things overlap. How many things overlap hyper-focus, hyper-sexuality, low, you know, inhibitions, higher risk-taking, you know, you've got disassociative things, and it just amazes me that we function, we've, look how far we've come, we're in a, oh, we're in a weird place now, okay, you know. Who the fuck knew Donald Trump would ever be president, but what a fucking sham that was. But, uh, you know, I try to look at the bigger picture, and we have a bigger, under, better understanding of these. You, it talked about imaging techniques, and eventually, I think, like I said, there'll be a threshold where there'll be an understanding of a um, procedure you'll have to take that'll rectify some of these, you know... Um, disorders and the cognitive distortions and you know the things that can build up the things that when exposed to a disorder again because i say how scary it is you know what if you have ptsd and you know you, you, do, you got an eating disorder to it how many things can overwhelm you I talk about my own issues, and I've got enough tools at my disposal or an understanding that things come one by one, and I'm, I'm good, and I can handle it, you know. And most of the time, you won't call me to be like, oh, it was a shitty fucking day. But when enough things pile up, you lose track. You won't always, I'm always focused. I always have to be on point, focusing, meditating, you know, transforming certain intrusive thoughts and whatever, right? So you got that whole deal going. And it just can be time consuming. Your life is so impacted. We're having an eating disorder. How much of our lives have to do with eating food? We have to breathe. We have to eat. Like, yeah. And again, um, my heart goes out to people. This is serious. People die. And people, we just make fun of them. Like I said, movies and whatever. But things have changed here and there. I do think that one day these things will be a prescribed remedy in the sense that you'll be I see I envision going to the doctor one day will be going getting blood work and then they'll have aspirins made for you flu medicine made for you and it'll be tailored to your body chemistry your genetics your you know imaging scans that know what pathways have to be lit up or you know reignited and Believe it or not, mushrooms, psilocybin, whatever, is being is touted as one of the greatest breakthroughs. They're doing lots of research on it. And what that does is it lets the body recreate new neural pathways, and it's so fascinating to me. So what will be, you know, uh, a major thing for somebody could be, hey, you taking your meds? You're sure, and there's no issues. And that would be like the goal of, I don't know, not a dystopia, but... You know, an era of humanity where it's, you know, most things are just prescribed for you because of 
the, you know, your DNA profile, if, if I'm even saying it right, because you know how, how many degrees I have and all the words that are fancy words that really could be used to do this, but I just don't want to, you know, make people feel in, inferior or anything, you know. I know everybody's understanding, so. I think that'll be it. This is, again, um, signs of an eating disorder or eating disorders in general, how it's commonly, you know, thought of as a lifestyle choice, and for a lot, it's not. And my heart goes out. This is a struggle, and the struggle is fucking real for people. Again, this isn't ethereal, you know, meta thoughts. You know, I'm thinking too much about, you know, this or that. No, we have to eat. Like, we eat. We breathe air. This is important, <laughs> you know, in, in how we function and all these overlapping things. Like I said, I don't, I, you know, I wish I did this preparation, but to find out how many fucking, um, how many have I done in a row now? Maybe I could do a quick thing. So, I'm looking at the video. So, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Alright, so I've done nine mental health disorder slash disorders podcasts in a row. This will be ten as I release it. And I can't tell you how scary some of the overlapping issues are between them all. And what does it mean for people? And I think it has to do with the one of the things I've said during one of these fucking things. Growing up... I was a child, and I had my ups and downs like any other child. Today, I would be in a spectrum, without a doubt, of like an autism spectrum or some new enlightening procedure, you know, understanding of how human brains work. So, this is what clinical trials do, and that thing's always funny to me, but it's important, you know, to try a tr clinical trial, but to understand that it might help people in the future. Yeah, my heart goes out to everybody. This is just a, you know, fairly misunderstood. And I've never been one to be super obese. But I do have eating issues, like, right? I mean, come on. This is way too common for people to be mistreated for it or made fun of. Again, I don't give a fuck. Make you your movies about heavy fat people and fat jokes comedians i'm not against that but i'm saying can we have an understanding of our aunts uncles and friends and what they go through and what their lives are like again add any other fucking mental disorder illness onto one of these things and they're there i can go back and read these fucking articles they're all links into my thing i can just do a big thing maybe i'll make a flow chart of like how many fucking things like, what is depression? Oh, depression's like fucking seven of them. It could be a symptom of everything. But depression, clinical depression, is its own thing. Just a myriad of fucking brain human shit. And it fascinates me, but it also concerns me. Again, my issue is not just people willy-nilly giving advice and just, you know, misunderstanding the thing. is having a general opinion an informed one so is it somebody who blurts out something about you know mary who has an eating disorder and he just nonchalantly says something really fucking stupid and what do you you know at least maybe read an article and listen to some asshole fuck up the human language or, or mute it and just hit the link and find the link and you know maybe we have a friend you know uh john or whatever that has a fucking disorder and struggles with it and talks about it but people are just fucking blowing it off in a way this is where i think we as friends and family can just alleviate some of the problems is that can we do that can we just make someone's life a little easier i hope so maybe some of these videos will do that and will help so on that note again some i apologize if some of these podcasts are a little haphazard and seem crazy um fighting my own things and deciding on what I'm going to be doing with the channel, but I think if I can do a couple, put them in the bank, as I call them, and not have to w once a week adhere to a thing, I might take some friends' advice. But anyway, that'll be it for today. Thank you for listening. 
This has been Eating Disorders, the Deadly Addictions channel. I'm Addiction Master on most social media. My best to you and yours, everybody. Till next time.